Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening. Welcome to Standard Bear, New York, Tuesday night teaching. We're doing something a little different tonight. I'm Pastor Sonia Chambers, and what we're doing tonight is we're having a little tea. So I'm hoping as you join into Bible study that you get your favorite cup of tea and your favorite cup, and you can post it in the comments. I have my favorite cup of tea. Here it is. This actually is my little teapot. So I'm going to pour my tea, and I hope you pour your tea, too, as we get ready to sip and study. So I don't know what kind of tea you have, but my tea is lemongrass tea with Manuka honey. we got to try to keep ourselves hydrated and stay at home. Amen? We're going to stay at home. And even in that, tonight's lesson is about perseverance, but we want to stay at home and persevere even in our homes. Amen? So I wanted to greet each and every one of you. Take a sip. We're doing something a little now. Today, tonight I'm teaching from my card table. I just do a tablecloth over it and I'm in a folding chair because one of the things we have to um, try to do is be a little, um, I think I want to just connect more because I remember when I first had my first apartment, I didn't have a dining room table. So last week I take from a the, the, the dining room table. Today we're doing the card table. So it's a card table, I'm sitting on a folding chair. You can study wherever you are in your house. You study in your bed, you study in your living room. The goal is to sit before the word of God in this season, amen? So before I even get started, we just wanna, um, you know, pray for even those people who lost loved ones, who are grieving even now. Um, things are changing at such an alarming rate and Initially, it was moving by the hour, but now it's moving by the minute. So, um, we just want to just take a moment of silence. We had lost some bishops uh, locally in New York City, and we just pray for those families even now. And Father, even touch each and every person that's grieving, those that are home that are healing, those that are still um, struggling with symptoms. Touch them even now. Your word says you sent your word and healed and delivered from all destruction. So Father, I send a healing word even now, even to, in, through this atmosphere, that you're gonna resolve this issue in Jesus' name as we come before you, as we humble ourselves and seek your face and repent from our wicked ways, you will heal this land. So Lord, we're trying to make a U-turn even now in the name of Jesus. So touch hearts and minds tonight as we continue to persevere, knowing that we have already won, we are victorious, and we love you, and you are our Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So welcome, welcome. Welcome to all, amen? Welcome, welcome to you. So tonight, I wanted to talk about perseverance, and um, I encourage you in this time, it's a good time to get out a study Bible if you have one. I'm trying to get mine because it's kind of big. I kind of use this one because it has like, a, it's a comparative study Bible. We have different ones, but this one is good because it has several versions in it. Um, for those who like to hold a Bible, this one has NIV, King James, NSAB, and Amplified in it. Also, you use your phone. Uh, you use the version app. It has multiple. You have Bible Gateway, and you have multiple um, versions of the Bible. So tonight... We want to just make Bible study a little bit more comfortable. Uh, the goal of um, these Tuesday night teach teachings are like a more theme-centered Bible study. So tonight we're doing tea. Next week we could be doing hats. But the goal is, is to be a bit more innovative with the Bible study and engage you as well. Amen? So we're talking about perseverance tonight. And um, this, uh, what does that really mean to persevere? And perseverance means that we have a determined continuation in something with a steady and continued action of belief that occurs over a long period of time. And I know sometimes it feels like this has been a long time and now we're hearing that this social distancing is extended to uh, some say the state saying 15 days, uh, the federal government is saying 30 days, and now we're out to April 30th. And we have to persevere even in this locked-in state. Amen? So perseverance is saying, it's saying something with a steady, continued action of belief that occurs over a long period of time amongst and despite 
especially difficult circumstances. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about tonight that we have to be steadfast and we have to be unmovable and we got to be planted and we got to be grounded in what we believe, especially those of us that are Christians. This is the time that we have to persevere because people are losing their loved ones and they're not even able to see them. Babies are being born and their, their father isn't, may not be the first um, person that sees them or can't support the mothers. Uh, funerals need to happen and people are being cremated. So all of these different things are going on and we're trying to understand what is going on. But one thing I can say tonight is that the word of God never changes. It, um, our, our father in heaven doesn't slumber and he doesn't sleep. So the scripture I wanted to share tonight, and there's several scriptures on perseverance, um, is James chapter one, verses two to four. And it says, consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials, and we're having various situations, people are struggling related to finances now, people are, are maybe food insecure, uh, they're trying to take care of their children, it's now we're on the cusp of the first of the month and all of the bills have already come in and now um, families are reevaluating what can be paid, what cannot be paid. Um, these are the trials that we may be facing at this time, but I'm encouraging you, persevere. What does this perseverance mean? To endure, to trust God even when you don't understand all of, all of the issues and make the phone calls. Uh, the government is making some allowances and um, insurance companies are making allowances, mortgage companies are making allowances. Call your landlords, persevere through the calls because one of the things that, um, that we sometimes, you know, we struggle with is that the pride of it, like I always pay my bills and now what is this happening? Well, you even have to push through your pride and endure making the call and making the arrangements for this season, amen? Verse three says, be assured that the testing of your faith, this I'm reading in the Amplified, which is the testing of your faith, which is saying through experience produces endurance, which is mean produces perseverance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. And one of the things that is, um, as you, we're moving forward and we're, and we're growing is that there's a piece that we gotta be um, content with. We have to almost be content in the state that we're in. The scripture says that. And it's not always comfortable staying inside the whole time. But at this point of, of, of this journey, we have to stay in. Um, we have to persevere even if the kids wanna go outside it's in the backyard. It's not in the front yard. This social distancing, remember that God is not separated from you. He never leaves you or he never forsakes you. But we have to be socially distant because now we have to protect one another. Amen? So this is not the time to go out and just um, window shop. Even if the, the, the supermarket is open, the goal is to try and persevere, stay in, and go out only when necessary. Amen? Verses four says, and let endurance have its perfect result. When you're in, you have to now get in contact with yourself. You have to figure out your life and, your, and, and sort everything out. Now, this is the time to look at your bills. Look at where you stand right now. Reevaluate even things like health insurance, uh, life insurance, wills. This is a time for you to really get yourself in line so that you can move forward when this this band, I guess, is lifted. But this, you have to persevere and stay in. I'm encouraging each and every person, this is not the time to move out and try to figure out what's going on outside. This is a time for us to be self-reflective and know what's going on on the inside so we can work on the outside, amen? Verses, uh, uh, verse four says, and let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking in nothing. And I'm saying this as Christians is that this is a time of self-development. This is our character building time. Do we really believe what we say we believe? Do we believe the word of God or were we just attending um, fellowship? But this is our time to be planted, to be rooted, to be grounded in the word of God, trusting it like never before, enduring, 
studying, reading, praying, pulling back from, I was on a conference call with, uh, uh, we have a connection with Covenant House and uh, I was the president of the organization was speaking and he was saying that even in uh, the housing, they have social distancing, even in the, the shelters, that they're moving the beds six feet apart so that even though people are homeless, they are still adhering to the rules. And we as the body of Christ, we have to adhere to the rules. Um, I encourage that because we just want to adhere to what the government is doing. We, we have no less faith, but what we have to do is be concerned about each other. So I'm encouraging you. The word is persevere. Amen? And what are the things that we can persevere in while we're in home? Persevere in prayer. This is the time to talk to God. This is the time to, to give him all your concerns and put all your cares on him. This is the time to read his word back to him. These are the things that we as Christians, as we are maturing in this season, is we have to persevere. What else can we persevere in? Our belief. Do we really believe what um, God's word says? This is now where our, our faith is being tested. But as, as we stand, it will come out as pure gold. Amen? So believe. Now, take a sip. Take a sip. Isn't that good? I like lemongrass tea. I really do. What are we persevering? This is a time to build our faith. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And to some of us, it feels like this is going on forever and it's taking forever. But I am trusting God, knowing that this battle is not ours, it's the Lord. I stand on the word of God. I encourage you to do the same, knowing that he will never leave us and that he will never forsake us. I want to go to Romans chapter 5 verses 3 to 5, and I'm reading this in the message version. It says, there's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed up in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience. And one of the things that we're developing, there's multiple mm -hmm. fruits of the spirit that we want to develop in our character. And patience, we would be learning that at this time. All of us who are locked in, which should be this whole city, outside of the first responders, which we, we're thanking God that they persevere. There's, there's, uh, we're losing some of our, our, our first responders now. Um, we're losing some of our bus drivers. We're losing uh, EMTs. We're losing uh, nurses and physicians. And our hearts go out to those families because those they continue to persevere to make sure that we were safe and, and we were okay. So our the least we can do is make sure we stay in so that they can stay secure. Amen? So we're not, um, even though we're hemmed up in this place, don't find this as just trouble. Look at what God is trying to teach you even within your confines of your home. We have to persevere. We have to be steadfast. We, we can't um, fight against what is going on right now. What do you do when you can't move? You have to be patient. So, Father, I even pray right now for patience for each and every one of us, that even as we're in our homes and we're sitting at our dining room tables and we're sitting on our couches, we're sitting at a, a card table and, and on a folding chair, we're in our basements, that we can be patient. Lord, I pray for patience even now over each family, that they're patient with their children and they're patient with their spouses and even patient with the mailman coming with the, with the envelopes. We're patient with the emails that we read and we're patient with even the social media things that we're reading. And Father, I even pray now that we'll have peace, love, and sound minds that we won't absorb all of it, that we'll leave it to you, God. So we trust you in Jesus' name, amen. You'll continue to see me um, pray throughout this Bible study because as the Holy Spirit starts to, to, to say things to me, I wanna pray for things because we're all feeling certain things and even though we're in our homes and some of us are alone and some of us are with family I know that patience is really needed at this time I even pray for those people who have doctor appointments even now who can't get to their physicians and they were concerned about even um, medication prescriptions and renewals and 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 heart checks and 
and blood pressure is being checked. But Father, I pray even now for your healing over them in Jesus' name. Amen? I wanted to share with you a simple story um, from the book of Hosea, which is an Old Testament book. But an Old Testament book with a very current meaning. Amen? So Hosea, it says, we often compare Hosea and Gomer. So it's, it's a husband and wife. So Hosea, he's a prophet in the Bible, and um, Gomer is his wife. So they kind of compare this story to like God and Israel, which is rightly so, because it does say so in Hosea 3.1. But I want to read what 3.1 says. It says, and the Lord said to me, go again, love a woman who is loved by another man and is an adulteress, even as the Lord loves the children of Israel, though they turn to other gods and love cakes of raisin. And you say, Pastor, what does that mean? What does that mean that, that we could be adulterous? What does adultery mean? That you fool around, right? You stepped out of the side of your first love, that you were married to some someone or a person, and you decided that you would just move on and 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 do something extra. So the application is clear. Hosea is called to love an adulterous woman. In the same way that God loves us with our wandering eyes, we have to accept it. We do we always just put God first? Um we have to recalibrate what is first. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added. But I, I believe many of us in our life, including myself, we have added things and then checked in with God to see if that was okay, instead of seeking him first and then adding the, and let him allow him to add to you. So, for example, today I was... Um, I wasn't expecting anything because I hadn't ordered anything. And um, the UPS man comes and drops off something. And I'm saying, I didn't order anything, so I don't know why we're getting a package. And lo and behold, somebody sends me like a chicken air fryer, something I was talking about to them, but they actually sent that as something I needed, which I did because I don't want to, we want to eat healthier, right? And we want to exercise in our homes and walk around the blocks. So I, I like a little chicken wing. I know you do too, for those who are meat eaters. So I um, don't always want to fry it. So we, we had this conversation. So I just wanted to thank, shout out to um, Sandra for sending me a chicken fryer. So I will be trying to fry chicken, air fry chicken um, tomorrow. But guess what? I didn't buy it. And that's what God wants to do to you as well. He want to add to you, not everything that you need. As you persevere and press into God, the very things that you put into prayer, he could send to you for, at home and you didn't have to purchase it. This is a season where you're going to have to test God and trust him and know that he can take care of you. How will you know him as Jehovah Jireh, Jireh if you're always providing for yourself? How will you know him as a healer when you're always taking Tylenol and, and medication and you can read the scriptures? How will we know these things if we don't allow him to do the work? So I didn't purchase it, but it was added to me. So I'm, I'm, what I'm encouraging you as, as I teach is that let's start to put God first. Let's persevere. Let's pursue him. Let's love him with an unfailing love and watch God work in your life in this season. Amen? So let me go back to Hosea. So here's the story. You know what? Let's take a sip. Hmm. Let's take a sip, because this is sipping tea, not, and we're gonna sip tea and have study, and we want you to relax. You see, I got my candle. I'm burning this candle. This is what? Yankee candle, fresh lemon. So these are the things that you can do at home as you persevere. Make your own little personal tea party. Get your Bible, get your laptop, get your tablet, get your phone. And study. Spend some time with the Lord. Have a tea party with him. This is a personal tea party with the Lord. You get your candle, your tea, and your word. And trust him. 
Amen? So let's get back to Hosea. So here's the story. So we were talking about this wandering eye. So now this is a time to reflect because this is Bible study. What do, you, what do you think that your thoughts are? What, what have you been wandering? What has been that thing that's been taking a place where God isn't primary in your life right now? That was the issue with Gomer because Gomer was Hosea's wife. But the issue with Gomer was that she could never, no matter how she was married to Hosea, she could not be faithful to him. She always found herself leaving and doing things that she should not be doing with other men. And then Hosea would go after her to find her and bring her back. Is that us? Is, is God going after you? Do you feel him pulling at your heart? Do you feel the Holy Spirit talking to you differently? Do you feel that you need to reconnect to God in a better way? Is, are we gomers? Are we the ones that's running the opposite way and things got in the way, our careers? And I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big proponent of that because um, I know in, early in my career, I, I was so focused on going up the corporate ladder and um in the younger in my in, in my 30s my focus was just career driven let me just focus on i'm moving up i'm moving up i'm going to do this and i'll be the assistant head nurse and then i'll try to be the head nurse and i want to be a supervisor and i did all of these things and the reality was i was going to work early in the morning at seven i was leaving work at 9 p.m I, sometimes i used to close the building and um, when I got home, when my husband was alive, when I got home, he was almost asleep. My children were asleep. And that was one of the gomers in my life, that my career was it. And if we're gonna, per if we're gonna persevere and through this and pursue, you're gonna have to endure this locking in with God. Because our jobs can't do it. Some of the, some people now, you know, we're un they're unemployed and, now you have to reinvent yourself. So this is a time to seek God's face to say, what are you adding to me? And what are you taking away? I mean, all of us want success. No one wants failure. But in this time, this is a very reflective time. So I pray even now that you persevere to reflect on the things that you need to be taken away and realign your life. Look at your family. What's the status of it? Look at your children. What's the status? And reconnect those relationships in Jesus' name. Amen? So back to Hosea. So Hosea, he was obedient and, pers and, and he persevered. Because even though, can you only imagine Hosea's surprise when God told him that, because, okay, what other man, his wife is stepping out on him and she's sleeping around and God is saying to this prophet Hosea in the Bible, Go get your wife and bring her back home. Not, not every man would do that. Amen? But that's what God is saying to us. Even though you stepped out on me, I'm willing to give you a chance if you just turn from the things that you think that are primary and make me primary so I can add to you. So I'm saying to you, in this perseverance, there's an obedience. There's an instruction that God is trying to get to you tonight. It could be our cars. It could be our finances. It could, have, it could have been our investments. These gomers can be your children. These gomers can be your, uh, your career. These gomers can be a, a relationship. So this is our time to persevere, to endure this separation, to see what God is really telling us, what to add to ourselves and what to subtract from ourselves. What's your goma? I'm going to give you a moment to think about what is my goma? Because this is an Old Testament story, but it has a very relevant meaning today because no matter what, Hosea still went after goma. He, he said, even though you stepped out on me, you're still my wife. And even though you've run away from home, I'm going to get you. And this is the same thing that God is saying tonight. This is the same thing that Jesus is saying. 
I still love you. I still went up on the cross for you. I still died for you. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So God is still, our heavenly father is still looking for you. He's still saying, I'm chasing after you. He's saying, just come on back to me. So I'm encouraging you tonight that don't be a goma. Let go of the goma. Because God wants a relationship with you. He wants to give you instructions. He wants to give you directions. He wants to give you encouragement. He wants to give you peace. But without relationship, without accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it's very hard. Those gomas will always seem like the biggest thing and the best thing to us. But as this, in this season, as we're locked in and we realize that the stores are closed, our goma could be shopping because I love me some shoes. Anybody love shoes? Put it in the comments and say, Pastor, I love shoes and I love a pocketbook. But is that really a priority? Because now my purse is upstairs and we can't go outside. Was it about what we look like to others? Or is it what God's saying that we need at the time? So I'm encouraging you tonight that we have to persevere. We have to endure this season of, of, of reconnecting with ourselves and connecting to the one who made us. And all things will be added. Everything, you won't miss one good thing at all. It will be added to you. So check out what gomers are in your life tonight. And I pray even tonight, God, that as we do this sipping and we study your word, that you give us clarity as to what are the things that we need to dismiss and not worry about. And I pray against worry even now and anxiety for those who are struggling, trying to figure out how they're going to make ends meet. I'm saying, put it to the Lord in prayer. And I'm encouraging those of us that are Christians, this is a season and this is a time that we have to pray for our neighbors and pray for our communities like never before. This is the time that we have to be really the disciples that were in the Bible that were scattered from every other part. So we're all in our neighborhoods and this is the time that we stand up and assist those who don't know him and encourage them and love them through this process. Amen? So as I'm wrapping up, I wanna just say some perseverance scriptures. Um, I'm saying them in um, ESV, which is the easy standard version so that you can fully understand because I want you to know that um, I want you to get an appetite just like we have an appetite like I have an appetite for my lemongrass tea I want you to start getting an appetite for the Word of God and you can go online and if you're struggling with anxiety there's scriptures for that if you need healing there's scriptures that you should be looking up and speaking those scriptures over your life um, if you need encouragement, there's scriptures that you speak of. If your family member's incarcerated, there's scriptures that speaks freedom in your mind, even when someone is locked in. So the goal is to put a word on every issue right now as we move forward. So in this perseverance, I want to read Hebrews 12.1, and this is the ESV version. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so, so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance, which is another word for perseverance, the race that is set before us. And there's a big race set before us because we don't know from one day to the next what is going on and what will change. But let's just push forward in perseverance. Let us endure. No, just like Jesus endured on the cross. Those of us that are Christians, let us endure and stay up. Just like he stayed in as he stayed up. We're going to have to stay in as he stayed up. He said to the Father when he was on the cross, if this cup could pass from me. That's why we're having a tea party. Because this cup can't pass. We have to stay in. Take a sip. We would like to just go and go back to life as usual. But until we get through this viral um, pandemic, the cup is still here and we have to stay in. 
So I'm encouraging you tonight with another scripture which says, 1 Chronicles 16, 11, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. And that's the persevering thing that you're going to have to do at home. Is that you're going to have to ask the Lord, give me the strength to stay. Give me the strength to, to study. Give me the strength to relax. Because some of us, our minds are still racing. We're still at work and we're at home. So give me the strength to, to just rest. Give, I give you permission to drink some tea and take a nap during the day. Those who are at home. And those who are working from home, I'm praying for your strength as well because it's a big transition because not everyone is home unemployed. People are home and working and that's a persevering thing in itself to try to realign your mind to move from an office setting to now a home setting. Right now I'm sitting in my living room with the card table, which I'm not at the office. You know, pastor is not at the office, but I have to transition my mind to know that the pastor is the person and not the place that they are. So I'm speaking to all the teachers. I'm praying for you even now that the teacher is the person and the classroom, you still connected to your children virtually, but I'm praying for those teachers and professors that the transition is much smoother and you're able to teach your children with an eloquence and a, and, um, a perseverance that goes beyond even your understanding. So I pray that even now in the name of Jesus, that every teacher and every person that's telecommuting and, and working from home, even those that are, were on television sets and now at home, I pray for your peace and that you're able to persevere through this process as we transition. Amen. So I, um, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I think um, we're in a different time now. Um, things aren't always what they look like. And we that are Christians, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And those who don't know Jesus, I encourage you to connect with him. Um, to pursue a relationship, all you have to do is ask him to come in your heart and have the Holy Spirit take control of your life. You just confess it with your mouth and you believe it in your heart and you can accept him tonight. Um, we're doing something different here at Standard Bear because even in this telecommuting, uh, starting tomorrow, April 1st, I've started like a telepastor tele uh, call line, which is 718-528-2100. And I'm getting some pastors on board so that we can assist in uh, praying for you, uh, even in the midnight hour, because sometimes a lot of us, are, I'm seeing that people are saying, I'm not able to sleep. And maybe you need just someone to pray for you just for a few minutes. So we want to make ourselves available that we're at Standard Bear in New York, that we're like on call. I used to be a nurse, so I know how to be on call. So we just transitioned the pastoral to be an on-call telepastor network. Um, you can go to our website, which is Standard Bearer New York. So it's standardbearerny.org. And you can actually just click on that and go straight in and type in your prayer request as well. And we will be praying. Know that Standard Bearer New York is praying. We're praying for New York City. We're praying for this, the governments, we're praying for this, uh, all the states, we're praying for the globe because this pandemic is systemic. But I serve a God that knows how to take care of every disease and he knows every hair on our head. So I trust him and I leave you with this. The battle is not ours, it is the Lord's. So God bless you all. Have a good night. Thanks for tuning in and have a sip. God bless you. Good night.